Hello, welcome to Prejame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 11 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the properties and events of an ASP.NET radio button control. Radio button control is actually used when you want the user to select only one option from the available choices. For example, the gender of a person. A person can be male or female. He cannot be both at the same time. So if the user has first selected male and then if he tries to select female, the initial male selection he made should automatically be deselected. So this is one of the scenarios when we can actually use the radio button control. Another example would be when you want the user to select his or her favorite color. In fact, for both of these choices, we can actually use another control called radio button list control in ASP.NET. We will be talking about radio button list control in a later video session. So in short, we can say that if you want to provide the user with mutually exclusive choices, then choose the radio button control. Now this radio button control exposes several properties and events that we need to be aware of as a developer. Let's actually look at an example. So here I have an ASP.NET web application which has got three radio buttons on this web form, male, female and unknown. And these radio buttons are actually wrapped between an HTML field set element. And this field set element has got this legend. legend contains this text gender so if you're wondering what a legend is that's the text that you can see within the field set and then and then inside that field set we have these three radio button controls which has got the ID and the text properties so the ID property as we know it's used to uniquely identify the control on this web form and then the text property is something that you can actually see for the radio button so we can use this text property so to set or get the text of the radio button control. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this. So there is a slight problem with these three radio buttons that we have on this web form. Now, the gender of a person can be male or female or unknown. It cannot be, you know, all of them at the same time. But then if you look at this radio buttons here, I am able to select all of them at the same time, which is a problem. We will correct that problem just in a bit. But before that, we will look at the other properties that are available for this radio button. The first property is the checked property. This is a Boolean property, meaning it's going to return a true or a false. It's going to return true if the radio button is checked. It's going to return false if it's not checked. Okay, so we can use this checked property to to determine what is the radio button that the user has clicked. So double click the button, it generates the event handler. So if male radio button, that's the ID of the male radio button, dot checked is equal to true. So which means if the user has selected the male radio button, then we know that he has made a choice of male. So response dot write your gender is instead of hard coding the text we can actually retrieve that from the control itself using the text property so male radio button dot text and then just to display this properly we can use the HTML break element so that each response is written in its own line all right so if the male radio button is checked. On the other hand, if the female radio button is checked, then we want to say so. So if female radio button dot checked is equal to true, then your gender is female radio button. Along the same lines, if unknown is checked, Okay, now there is a slight problem with this code. Actually, you, you look at this kind of code on the internet. The problem is, look at this checked property. You know, the checked property itself is a Boolean property. So which means it's going to return a true or a false. You don't really have to compare that value to a true. You can just say, if checked. Okay, that itself is enough. You don't have to retrieve that and then compare it with unnecessary processing. This can be slightly better in terms of performance. 
all right so obviously when we run this now and then when you make your choices you know whatever are the choices that the user has made you know those will be printed so I select all three of them so it's saying your gender is male your gender is female and unknown as expected okay so this checked property is used to determine whether if the user has actually checked that radio button or not and we can use the text property to get or retrieve the text of the radio button control and then there is another property called text align property and this is very simple to understand you know this basically dictates the alignment of the text of the radio button control do you want that to be on the right side or on the left side so at the moment if you look at the radio button controls you know for all the three radio button controls we have the text aligned on the right hand side let's say for example for this radio button I want the text to be aligned on the left hand side I go to the properties window text align and I can just choose left and then that flips that to the left side so let's put this back to right side so that's the text align property auto post back and this is similar to other controls like the auto post back property of a text box control or a drop down list control we set this property to true if you want the web form to be posted immediately when the checked status of the radio button changes okay now if you look at the text box control text box control exposes text changed event and that's by default is cached in the view state of the control and then this event the text changed event will be fired only when you post the web form back to the server by clicking a button control okay so in a similar way you know the radio button exposes an event called checked changed in the sense you know the checked selection changed event this event is fired whenever the status of the radio button control is changed the checked status is changed now by default this event is cached in the view state if you want to treat that as a post back event set the auto post back property to true so if you look at this for example you know when I double click that look at that checked changed event handler is generated and let's say response dot write and since this is the mail radio button I'm gonna say mail radio button selection changed alright so now when we actually run this you know let's rerun that once again so when we run this and when we change the selection of that mail radio button look at this it's not selected I select that but the event didn't get fired immediately but when I click the button look at that that's when it gets fired because the event is cached in the view state of this control and it's fired by default only when you post the web form back to the server for processing but if you want to convert that cached event of this radio button control into a post back event all you do is is set the auto post back property to true and we do that by going into the properties window and then set this auto post back property to true so when we run the application now and then change the selection it will be immediately posted back to the server so I select that you know immediately post it back unselect that it will again post back to the server if you want to unselect you know these are not mutually exclusive now so you wouldn't be able to unselect that we will correct that problem just in a bit alright let's turn this off the auto post back property so we have seen the auto post back property and along the same lines we also have seen the only event exposed by the radio button control checked changed event okay and the very important property is the group name property and if you look at these radio button controls they are not interacting with each other meaning they are not mutually exclusive at the minute if you want to make them mutually exclusive then these radio button controls have got a property called group name property so if you want all these three radio button controls to be mutually exclusive set the group name property of all these three radio button controls to be the same so I'm gonna set the group name for this radio button control to be let's say gender group and use the same group name for all the three radio button controls so select both of them go to properties and I'm gonna select 
set the same group name. Now if I go ahead and run this and try to select the radio buttons will be mutually exclusive as expected. So that's the significance of group name. So look at this. Now these are mutually exclusive. And obviously if I select now, your gender is unknown. On the other hand, I select female, click that, your gender is female. You know, it correctly works as expected. Okay, but then if you look at the code, we know that at the minute these radio buttons are mutually exclusive, which means only one of these radio buttons is going to be checked. Okay, so if that's the code, and if that's the case, then you can slightly improve the performance of your code by using an else if. Else if. Else. So what you're telling here. Actually, let's put this condition here. So here, we are making these conditions mutually exclusive. Because the user will be able to select only one option, we are also checking in our code, okay, is it, if, if this is checked, we know that these two, will, these two conditions will be skipped. So the performance of the code will be slightly better to what it was before. So the behavior will be exactly the same, except that this is slightly better in terms of the performance. So male, your gender is male. Similarly, if I select female, your gender is female. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.